So is universal whole life a good investment? First and foremost, there is no such thing as universal whole life insurance. Although many people will combine those words together. There's universal life and then there's whole life insurance. Well, we're gonna talk about both, right? But especially let's talk about universal life insurance. Is it really that good? It's kind of like, you know, breakfast is like the best meal of the day. Well, that's debatable, right? Same thing with universal life insurance. Let's really dig in and see what is it really about and is it really the best option? In fact, hang till the end, I'll give you even a better option than universal life insurance. All right, so let's talk about an indexed universal life insurance. Now there's universal life insurance. The benefit of plain old universal life insurance is that it's a flexible premium. That's how it's always advertised, right? There's flexible premiums. You don't have to always pay the same amount every single year. Now there's variable universal life and then there's indexed universal life. Variable is tied to the stock market 100%. So if the stock market goes down, you can actually lose money. These ones have become a lot less popular, especially once we got into the 2000s. The 90s were roaring, people were selling variable universal life like crazy, and then the market crashed, and then people said that was a ripoff, right? Where in the early 2000s, like when I was a financial advisor, universal life insurance, or especially indexed universal life, which is you get the height of the stock market, at least to some level, usually only get up to nowadays eight to 10% on the high end, but you don't also lose any money either. You might have a floor of zero or 1%. So you get anywhere from like about zero to 10% or somewhere in between. Now that could be good in the way that if the market goes down, at least you don't lose money. At the same time, if the market goes, just rallies and makes a ton of money, you don't get all those gains either, right? So you get kind of that mushy middle, right? That mediocre middle is what you get. Now there is a purpose for that. I'll tell you the best way that index universal life works best is especially when there's always an up market. Now true, a variable universal life would be good too, but index universal life works best when there's up market, which has been the last 15 years. Since 2009, the stock market has only been down one year. That was in 2022, that was it. So think about it, 14 years up, one year down. When normally the stock market is, you know, they talk about the Wall Street waltz, two steps forward, one step back. It's pretty typical that maybe with every five up years, there's two down years. We haven't seen that. In 15 years, we haven't seen six down years. We've seen one down year. So part of the risk is if you try to look at getting an index universal life policy today, and definitely not a, a variable universal life, it is very likely that at some point the market will kind of come back into balance and you might see the market come back down again. So just be aware of that, that although it could be good if the market's going up, if you're at the height of the stock market, you could have some risk there. Now, one thing I also understand about universal life in general, right, is that it's basically by term and invest the difference. So where you have term insurance, where it's just death insurance, universal life has this tax-free cash value component to it. Now, they also have a death benefit, of course, that comes with it, but it's really just term insurance. It's kind of like, you know, I remember when I was a financial advisor, everybody was all about the Lexus, right? Everybody wanted the Lexus. And then I realized, I said, you know what? That Lexus everybody keeps buying is the same exact parts as a Toyota Corolla. It just has a different brand image on it. And then I find out, guess what? The Toyota actually was using the same parts as the Lexus, but you pay like half the price of the Lexus. I said, well, why not just buy the Toyota, right? And that's kind of like when it comes to looking at these insurances, Universal life is like the Lexus, where term insurance is, and by term invest difference is like the Toyota, right? The Lexus, it looks awesome, but the truth is it's just a fancy way of buying term and investing the difference. There's a one year term that occurs that you're paying on. So every year you get older, those insurance costs go up because naturally every year you get older, you're more likely to die the next year. So what you're seeing happen is that the cost of the policy go up over time in this universal life policy. That's a risk because if the stock market doesn't perform well and those costs are going up, you could actually lose money in the policy. In fact, it's very, very common. I'm seeing it a lot lately. Even though we've had an up stock market for a long time, we're seeing more people saying, well, if the market doesn't keep performing like this, what will happen is that this policies could actually run out of money when they're in their 60s or their 70s. And then you have to like start dumping in more cash than you ever expected. And remember, people are trying to tell you, you can use this as a retirement account, but the likelihood is that if those costs keep going up and the market doesn't perform well, you'll have to keep putting money into it versus taking money out of it. Now, what are some alternatives to IULs, right? We talked about term insurance. You can always buy term and invest the difference. The problem is, of course, that term insurance also goes up every single year. And so what happens is that most of the time when people are buying term, it gets to the point where they get in their 60s and 70s, they'll say, uh, this thing is getting too expensive now. I'm just gonna cancel it. Or they've been taught by financial advisors, you know, these people are paid to sell you crap, not actually make you money. Or even insurance agents that will say, 
No, 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 you should, you should cancel it when you get older because when you have enough assets, you can just get rid of life insurance because your family's moved out, they don't need money anymore, and just pass on your stuff. Well, understand this, that philosophy came from insurance companies. Why would an insurance company tell you to cancel your insurance before you hit your 70s or by the time you're hitting your 70s? Because that's when you're likely to die. Hello, if the average age is into the late 70s to early 80s for Americans right now, right? Of course they're gonna tell you to cancel before you hit the average age. They want you to cancel it because for insurance companies, and they've actually told this to us as insurance agents, it's pure profit. Less than 1% of all term insurance ever pays out. So they're gonna push it because it's cheap and they make a lot of profit off it. This is like this, the, the drink at McDonald's, right? They sell you the little crappy Big Mac, you know, or whatever it might be. They make very little money on the Big Mac, but they make all the money when they sell you that drink. That soda costs like a couple cents, but they sell it to you for like three bucks, right? That's the difference. They're selling you what is their soda, the thing that makes them the most money. They're selling you that because they know you're gonna cancel it and they keep teaching you to cancel when you get older. And the truth is they design it to, by the time you hit age 80, you've already paid for your whole death benefit anyways, so why keep it? This is why I prefer whole life insurance. Now, whole life insurance, like universal life, is permanent insurance. It does have that ability to go for your whole life. Now, it could be more expensive up front. If you buy a traditional whole life policy, you end up having all your insurance costs front loaded. So rather than getting more expensive over time, it gets a little bit cheaper over time. It's more expensive up front, cheaper on the back end. And so that's a big criticism people give it. It's like, hey, this thing takes me 13, 15, 17 years before I finally have as much in this tax-free cash account than I paid into it. That's a long time, a long time to wait, especially with a universal life where you could make that money faster, especially if you get some good market returns. So that's where there's another alternative to that as well. That's what we refer to as max ROI, infinite banking. See, we don't try to just have you pay the traditional whole life policy. Those traditional whole life policies do actually take a long time to build up cash and you lose a lot of your money. I know because I bought my first policy from an insurance agent where I was trusting him, he was a good friend. However, when I asked him, I said, hey, I've noticed this, like I've, I know what universal life looks like. I don't know what whole life looks like where I know whole life is stable, it's not in the stock market. I get that, but I noticed that this thing is expensive, especially up front. And I was paying $1,000 a month, but nothing going to cash is all going to paying the insurance costs. He said, yeah, that's the way they all are. I said, okay, well, you know better. I'll take your word for it. Well, of course, when the recession hit and I was in a, in a cash crunch, I couldn't keep paying my payments. Next thing you know, I'm actually going broke. I can't keep my payments going. So what did I end up doing? I ended up having to lose the policy. I paid 25 grand into it over two years and I had nothing to show for it. I lost my policy. It was like the most expensive ripoff ever. Here's what I found out. He could have designed it better. And in fact, I showed it to him. I ran him the numbers because I was life insurance licensed. Even when I bought it, kept my license really for the last 22 years. I showed him the number that said, if you would have design it this way to where there's less costs up front, I would have cash instantaneously from day one. This policy I would never lost during the recession. I would have kept it going. I would have lost all this money that I paid into it. His answer, Chris, I designed it that way because I could not afford to cut my commissions. Right, that's the problem. Financial advisors are paid to sell you crap, not make you more money. That's what he did. So in the last 15 plus years now, I've been trying to develop that method and get it better to where it pays for itself very quickly. So it actually ends up being flexible like universal life, so it has that benefit where traditional whole life, it's like the fixed payment all the time. We can actually make it flexible where you have a range that you can pay between, but it also can even outperform universal life even if they get good stock market returns sometimes. Now granted, if you get great returns in the stock market like we've had the last 15 years, Yes, universal life will probably be whole life, but I don't predict the next 15 years will be like the last 15 years. That's unrealistic. That's just not how the markets work. And so I go with whole life because I don't have to worry about losing money. I don't have to worry about it getting more expensive. It gets cheaper over time. If I can make the cost as cheap up front as possible, then this money just grows faster to where usually instead of waiting 17 years to break even, I can usually break even in five or six years. So that's the big thing that I really try to focus on with whole life is make it flexible, make it work to where it performs well, and even better, guys. I not only can just let it sit there and grow, which is fine, it's not very sexy or anything like that, it makes five or 6% a year or so, that's fine. But what I really like about it is that I can actually use that money to invest anywhere I want. I can pull it out. So it's not an investment, right? I mentioned, I didn't, said these are not investments. You know, whole life, universal life, these are not investments at all. They're savings vehicles with a death benefit. But what I can do is I can use that money to go and invest in things like real estate, my own business, make money in two places at once when I'm using my whole life policy. And that's where that max ROI, infinite banking comes in. Not to mention, I protect my family as a perk, right? It's almost like icing on the cake. I can protect my family and create a legacy of generations of wealth that could pass on hand 
it really from generation to generation and keep building that wealth rather than having it shrink after putting in all that hard work during my own lifetime. That's why I use that over Universal Life. Even though I can do Universal Life anytime and design it however I want, I've just never seen it to where I have enough confidence to really want to put my own money in it, let alone risk my own future with that money. So that's why I use whole life insurance. Now, do you want to see which option might be best for you? Because there is a way to justify sometimes for universal life versus not. Hey, reach out to us at moneyripples.com. Go to the infinite banking tab. You can actually book a meeting to see what would be your best option right now.